Hello, Ben. It's a long time since you've been around here, Jennings. Too long. We all have our problems. Yours is, but you're in arrears. Fifty pounds. You never came for it, Jennings. Like I said, we all have our problems. But I'm here now, Ben. And I want my money. They don't reckon much to the Jennings boys round here since your brother Mick was put away. What does that mean? Means you're finished. Nobody wants to know. You take that line with me and you'll wake up Monday morning without a business. Without one workable machine, Craddock. You'll take this place apart. You haven't got the weight, Jennings. Pull out before you hit real trouble. Trouble? You mean George Rodin? Have you been paying him, eh? So he's taken over, is that it? Take off, Jennings. So he thinks we're finished, eh? He's not the only one. Beat it, Jennings. You've had your last hand out from me. to call, George, if any of the Jennings boys came visiting. What's first prize, Jeannie? First prize? Oh, Jeff, I'm sorry, but I've got to rush if I want to be out of here by five. Oh, you've got a date, have you? Yes, I have. With you. Tonight? Oh, Jeff, don't tell me you've forgotten. Yeah, uh, no, no. Um, where are we going? The Rotary Dinner. Oh, that. Oh, that. That is your new potential divorce clients. I mean, they could be very useful contacts for you, Jeff. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. I didn't get a dress suit. I meant to hire one. Well, it's too late now. Have I got to have one? Yes, you do. I mean, without the full evening gear, you wouldn't even get past the doorman at the Whitlock Hotel. Come on. Is that bad? Come on. Out. Out. Right. Yeah, and it's the same story everywhere. George Rodin's moved onto our pitch. Clubs, arcades, betting shops, the lot. I tell you, Harry, we're cleaned out. We better get something done about it then. Yeah, well, it can't be too soon. Okay. Good night. George Rodin. How is that, sir? How is it? 
There's room for four of us in here. Well, we can all go. Perhaps a size smaller, sir. A size smaller? Well, look at me. Ridiculous. Just look at me. Yes, sir. Do you think you could possibly find something a little less like a circus tent? I'm doing my best, sir. It's the only one we've got. All right, then. I'll see what I can do. Ah, oh, you've upset him now, Jeff. Don't take it out on him, you know. You've arrived too late. All the suits have gone. I don't expect a Savile Row job, but I'm not going round looking like a knockabout vaudeville comedian. Why not? You get a lot of laughs. Just don't stand up, that's all. I am doing my best, you know, sir. Oh, he's still upset, Jeff. Look at him. His eyes are flashing. You've got him going. Oh, shut up. Well, oh, really? <sighs> well, that's all right, sir. It's lovely, that, sir. Fits like a glove, sir. It's supposed to fit like a suit. Well, just keep breathing in. I can't. Yeah, time I pick Genia. Oh, is it going to be a late do, Jeff? Well, I don't know. There'll be dinner, toasts, boring speeches. Might go on forever, because I'm a bit worried about Genie. She's, uh... She's not looking very well. Well, I thought she looked fine. No, she's a bit pale. So, don't keep her out to all hours, right? If I had my way, we'd leave before the brown wins up soup. Good night. Don't you believe it? You're not wearing a hired dinner suit. Well, you can't complain. I mean, you did meet some very useful people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Business before <laughs> pleasure. Yes. <laughs> Hello? Sorry. Wrong car. Mine's the same type. Oh? Where? Anybody can make a mistake. Cool customer. Well, you didn't have very much to say for yourself. Jeannie, tonight I could do without trouble. What's that? My friend left us a present. It's a used cartridge case. Jeff, look at your cough. It's blood, Jeannie. We'd better get over to the police. Thin story, Randall. Oh, exactly. If we'd been concerned to make it look good, we'd have thickened it up a bit. Maybe. Take a look at these. I'll be back in a minute. He doesn't believe us. No, it's just professional caution. Name? Jennings. Oh. The family feuding with the rodents. But it's never run to murder before. A duff up in a back alley is more their style. Mm. They've had him in there a long time. I'll be showing him the photos, Mark. Photos? Mug shots. Mm. Everyone has been inside. But they got one of George. Sure. Sure they got one of George. But he said they got a good look at him. Then they'll identify. There's no doubt about that. 
Jeff. That's him. George Alfred Roden. Roden? George Alfred? <clears throat> Are you certain? Positive. You, Mrs. Hubcock? Oh, yes, quite sure. Shall we pick him up, sir? Yeah. We'll need to see you again, I'm afraid, after we've had a talk with him. What about the car? We'd like to keep it for the moment. You can have it back tomorrow. There's a police car waiting to take you back. No, thanks. We'll take mm -hmm. a taxi. Shall I see you up? No, thanks. I'm all right. Something on your mind? Oh, it's silly, I suppose. It's just a feeling about tonight. What do you mean, the court, the identification parade? Maybe. Something else? I don't know. Intuition. Ah, it'll be all right tomorrow. Bye, Jeff. Good night, Al. Which one do we start with, then? Fella? Or the girl? Jeff, how many times have I told you about keeping Jeannie out late? It's a long story, Marty. So in jail, I don't mind. But I don't want to see the business run down. I don't see why it should run down, George. Don't worry, George. Mr. Loftus and young mortal see they keep paying up. But what makes you think they're going to put you away, George? I was seen, wouldn't I? In the car park. Well, don't worry. There's nothing to fret about. I mean, a witness is only as strong as his constitution, isn't he? <laughs> George Roden. What's all this about, then? Psychological warfare? Detective Inspector Large, the idea. I'd like to ask you a few questions. All right, Inspector. Sit down. A tea and a make way for the Inspector. Go on, dear. Off you go. <laughs> down at the station, if you don't mind. Well, certainly, Inspector. I'm very cooperative, I am. What's it all about, then, eh? Is it uh, a traffic offence, eh? I have a trouble with cars, I do. Don't know, Tina. Cars, cars... You run it close, Roden. Yes, something to do with cars. One car, anyway. And a dead man inside. Dead? Oh dear, oh dear. Dead. Anybody I know? I'll say this, Roden. You're a cool customer. But with two witnesses, I've got you by the throat. And you won't find it easy to shake me free. Chocolate. Jeff, you can't let Jeannie go through all this. Look, you find a body in the back of your car. It makes you very cooperative. Take it from me. It's not you I'm worried about. Oh, thanks. We can't allow Jeannie to go into the box to give evidence against George Roden. Why not? Because he's capable of anything. Look, Jeff, you know how it is. If there's a feud on, the Jennings mob won't thank you for getting mixed up in it. And they might have got a Jeannie already. Marty? Marty? You could be right. Hello? Jeannie? Yes? Are you all right? <gasps> well, apart from being in imminent danger of pneumonia, I'm fine. Why, Jeff? Oh, nothing. 
I was just checking. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Fine. Good night. Good night. Evening. You had a big night tonight. Bodies in cars, police stations, identifications. You do get my meaning. Suppose I decide to be awkward and say no. He's getting the message now. Yeah, he's not so full of the old chat now. And keep it that way. Especially when the law starts showing you them pictures. I suppose George Alfred sent you. No names, no pack drill. So I don't get to know who sent the message. Mm -mm. Nor the names of the messenger boys. I don't think this one's sufficiently impressed. Come on. Everyone makes a mistake, Randall. Once. I'm sure when you've thought it over, you'll know what to do. Jeff, are you asleep? Oh. Jeannie's gone to bed. She's locked herself in, so she should be all right. You're going in the wrong place, Marty. Mortrode and Mike Hales. Yes, we know them. Well, I suppose we'd better pick them up. Well, don't bother on my account, Inspector. Wouldn't want them to think they've got me worried. Anyway, how long could you hold them? Thank you, Randall. That's very public spirited of you. And your kindness is succeeded only by your personal beauty, Inspector. What about Mrs. Hopkirk? She's waiting outside for the identification parade. Shall I bring her in? No. Don't tell her anything. They didn't go near her, and I didn't breathe a word about the argument. How did you explain that? I trod on a broom. Look, can't you keep her out of this? You've got me. She can identify George. The rodents know that. If they plan anything, they'll go ahead, whether she stays silent or not. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, very nice turnout this morning. Cut the jokes, eh, rodent? Get in line. Move over. I call the first witness, Sergeant. Mrs. Hopkirk! Now take your time, Mrs. Hopkirk. Walk to the end of the row, and then if necessary, return and place your hand on the shoulder of the man you wish to identify. You may ask for the men to speak if you wish. That's the man. Thank you. You want to change your position? You're entitled to. Second time lucky, eh? <laughs> Mr. Randall. I walk to the end of the road, Mr. Randall. And then if I don't the ball. Thank you, Inspector. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Randall. It's the least I could do. Charged with murder. On the word of a couple of informers. 
How can you trust people like that? I thought we frightened him good last night. Oh. He's tougher than I thought. What about her, the girl? Maybe he fancied her. That's a good idea. George would like that one. Wait a minute. We're getting carried away. First, the legal way. Sorrel? That's right. Mr. Ralph Sorrel. Mrs. Roden, shall we say... Two thousand pounds. Say something else. Less. I wish I could. For such excellent and uh, regular customers as your family. But times are hard. I know. Fifteen hundred. Cash? When have you ever had anything else? Then it looks as though we have an agreement. I should think so. Oh, there's just one thing I forgot to mention. Hmm? If you don't get him off, you get nothing. Oh, my dear Mrs. Roden. No, no, I tell a lie. If you don't get him off, there might just be a little consolation prize. From Mort. Then we'd better start thinking about it. Hmm? Two witnesses. The case would seem to rest entirely on two witnesses. The whole identification system is being seriously questioned at the moment, even by the most enlightened judges. Good. I myself am on a committee of the profession to recommend a re-examination of the procedure. At present, it does not contribute towards a just result. Most likely not. It would help my brief enormously if someone were to see Mrs. Hopkirk. I was going to take my car to the garage, but... Uh... Things have been a bit hectic. It's probably just the plugs. They might need a clean-up. Yes, probably. Are you going out again? No, I'm not, Sergeant. I'll go and have a look at them, if you like. Oh, would you? <laughs> well, all right, then. Fair's fair. I'll give you a cup of tea. All right. That's all as we left it. Good. I'll put the kettle on, then. losing my grip. I was positive something was wrong. It might be Jeannie. Addressed to Inspector Large. She's gone, Jeff. How can she be gone? She's got a police guard. Oh, she's got a guard, all right. He's in the street messing about with her car. Come on, Jeff, get the police round there. How can I? What can I tell well, them? You'll have to work something out. I'm going to find Jeannie. How long do you expect to keep me here? As long as it's necessary. They'll find me easily. Will they? You work it out, Mrs. Hopkirk. This is the last place they'll look. Yeah. Well... Now that you know what to do, I'd better get back. Yeah, off we go, Ma. I'll look after her. You keep your hands off her. As long as she's safe, George is safe. Well, I wasn't going to hurt her, Ma, honest. You had better not. Ma, now you go, Mrs. Rowe. Don't worry, nobody will see me. Better make ourselves comfortable. If when you arrived at the apartment she'd gone, how did you get in? Uh, I have a key. I see. And you say she left a letter? 
That's right. Addressed to you. You didn't think of bringing it with you? Uh, no, no, I didn't. And you didn't see my man Chalmers? No. You know, Randall, this is a pretty tall story. Look, Inspector, this is urgent. So you've said. Sorry, sir. You were supposed to stay with Mrs. Hopkirk. Well, I took her back to the apartment, sir. That isn't what I said, Chalmers. Uh, no, sir. But uh, I was only outside for a few moments. Which was long enough. Well, I didn't see them go past me, sir, and I didn't see her leave. You telling me they grabbed her? Well, that's the only thing that could have happened, isn't it, sir? No, it isn't. Perhaps if you didn't see Mrs. Hopkirk, it was because she didn't want you to. Ah, come on, Inspector. Well, I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Randall said it was a letter. Oh, uh, 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 yes, sir. He was right. It's addressed to you. She's gone into the country. Said she couldn't identify Roden anyway. That's not from Jeannie. You can't believe this. Of course. You could have known all along. Known what? The contents of the letter. How could I? Simple. If you were there when the lady wrote it. Why would she write that? The offer of a very large sum of money, perhaps? Inspector, I don't like the way this conversation's going. Where's Mrs. Hopkirk? I've been asking you to find her for the last ten minutes. My man was there. If she's disappeared, it's because she wanted to. Perhaps they were waiting for her. I checked the apartment, sir. That'll lead you. Look under the beds. She could have called out. He wouldn't have heard her. He was outside men in the car. Oh? I thought I'd caught a glimpse of him on the way in. And saw the letter? Yeah. You're holding out on me, Randall. You just find Mrs. Hopkirk. Like I said, if she's disappeared, it's because she wanted to. Inspector? You can prove me wrong, Randall, by testifying. What happens to Jeannie then? What about my car? Take it. Thanks. Do you believe his story, sir? I don't know what to believe. Do you think he'll go in the box? He better. Otherwise, I'll throw the book at him. What about Mrs. Hopkirk? Put out a description. I wonder if found. There's no sign of her anywhere, Jeff. Well, can you sort of home in on her? I've tried, I've tried. It doesn't work. But why don't you just relax? Has anybody else tried to put any pressure on you? No, only the inspector. Hey? Eh? Well, he's got a sneaking suspicion that we've taken a bribe. And if I don't come through with my story in court, he's going to try and prove it. And if you do? Jean is in trouble. There's no reason why we shouldn't be a little friendly. You just keep your hands off me. Jeannie! I don't understand it, Jeff. I really thought I'd made contact with her. And you ended up in the apartment, eh? Yeah. I'll keep looking, Marty. Right. Where are you going? To visit the rodents. Ah. Oh. silly of me. You should always look where you're going. I suppose you're old Mother Roden. That's right. You know who I am? Sure. You're that informer fella. Uh -uh. I want the girl, Jean Hawkirk. Oh, she's gone, has she? Pity. Still means she can't say nasty things about my George in court, doesn't it? You've got her here. Have I? In that case, you'd better have a look round, hadn't you? All right, 
she's not here. Where is she? Even if I knew, you'd have to kill me first. I mean, the way things are, it'd be like sending me own son to jail, wouldn't it? I mean it, mister. You'd have to kill me first. So you just stood there and watched her eating chocolate and did nothing. So what am I supposed to do? Suffocate her with a sack full of soft centers? If necessary, yes, because she is responsible. Well, what about you? Where did you look? Oh, come on, Jeff. Everywhere, everywhere, twice. Hey, what are we going to do with her? Well, you heard, Jamar. Nothing. I mean, after the hearing. Well, the way things are, I don't see as George would be able to let her go. What, do you? I think I'm right in saying, Mr. Jennings, that those were the events of that fateful evening, and you didn't see your son alive again. No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jennings. <laughs> Mr. Jennings, though I sympathize with you in your sad loss, while you are in this court, you will behave in a seemly manner. This is the County Criminal Court. I think you've got the wrong number. Oh, no, that's right, Randall. The Criminal Court. Who is that? We met the other night, remember? Now, listen. The girl's all right. How do I know that? <laughs> Just listen. Oh! Jeff, go to the court and tell them everything! She's a pretty girl. At the moment. If your worship pleases, I would like to call Mr. Jeffrey Randall. Call Mr. Jeffrey Randall. <laughs> Jeffrey Randall? Jeffrey Randall? <laughs> Jeffrey Randall? <laughs> I'll see what's happened. That's the end of your case, Inspector. Is there nothing you can do? It is getting late. This magistrate lives some distance out of town. He usually likes to adjourn early. Where is your witness, Mr. Parker? Can you try? Uh, may it please your worship? You want to adjourn? Your worship? Yes, I know, Mr. Sorrow, but we can't all live in central London. The court will adjourn until 10 o'clock tomorrow. Be upstanding in court. Reprieved. Any luck? Marty. No. How about you? Nothing. What do we do now? Well, I can't go back to court until we find Jeannie. The rodents must have Jeannie. The phone call, it all adds up. Do you know, it's funny. Every time I get this feeling that Jeannie's in danger, I end up at our apartment. Well, it's old associations, Marty. They die hard. Do you think so? It must be. Look, if we find the rodents, we'll find Jeannie. I'm sure of it. So we keep looking. Well, let's go. Nip outside, see if the police are around. 
Right. You know, when this lot's over, we should have a party. Yeah. What kind of a party? A sort of welcome home for when George gets back tomorrow. Don't count your chickens. Well, what's the problem? Randall won't give evidence, not while we've got the girl. Don't be too sure. He's very stubborn, doesn't like it when the pressure's on. Oh, but he's not going to let anything happen to you, is he, my darling? He might not have a choice. The police will see that he gives evidence. He disappeared, sweetie, right after we called him. <laughs> Don't you worry. He won't let any harm come to you. Why don't you go and lie down? I'll be all right. Oh, you've had a long day. You must be tired. Mm. I am a bit. There's a bed made up in the other room. I'll call you if anything happens. I suppose I might as well. Come on, Mark. Uh, oh. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sleep tight. Very touching. I'm a lovely son, aren't I, my... Darling. Why don't you take a little walk over to the off-license and get a bottle? And Morty and I wouldn't like it. You know what she said? No booze until after the hearing. Well, get a breath of fresh air, then. <laughs> Have a walk round the block. Have two walks round the block. Have three walks round the block. If you say so. I do say so. Take your time. You've got no control. What's going on? Oh, it's nothing. It's a little accident, Ma. Where's Hales? You went for a walk. Oh? Well, it's going to be a long night. They're here. The bogies. Inspector, we were just moving on. Now relax, I'm not the law. I'm looking for the Roden family. They used to have a garage around the corner. Yeah, I know. We haven't been around for days. Uh, you wouldn't know where they might have gone. Well, they, uh... They might be anywhere. That's right, anywhere. Anything I can do for you, mister? Yeah. I've been asking around. You know the rodents. Who doesn't? So where are they? They've got a garage. I tried there. Then I wouldn't know. What about when things warm up? You the law. What do you do? Like I said, I wouldn't know. They're on your payroll, I suppose. Suppose I took it into my head to smash up a few of your machines. You'd need them then, wouldn't you? Maybe. You'd get in touch? No. I'd leave a message. I think you're holding out on me. Think what you like. 
I could be awkward. How awkward? You got a license for this lot? A current license? Look, I told you. If they're not at the garage, I don't know where they are. Really? It's not worth my while to cross you, is it? No. About the license. You won't stir it up for me. Well, why should I? I'll leave that sort of thing to the law. Again, Marty. I could have sworn she was here this time, Jeff. What are you doing here, anyway? Oh, I don't know. I thought Jeannie might have left some kind of clue, but if she has, I can't find anything. Same last night. Nobody's seen the rodents since George's arrest, and nobody knows where they've gone. The court opens in ten minutes, and in fifteen, George Roden will walk out not guilty. Lack of evidence. I don't know what to do, Jeff. I've tried everything. And I keep coming back here. Hey, wait a minute, Marty. If you arrive here every time you think of Jeannie... Yeah? Why don't you think of Jeannie while you're here? Well, what good will that do? I don't know. But something might happen. Well, it's worth a try. Where you go, Marty. <laughs> See, Jeff, nothing. What do you mean? You were going up and down like a yo-yo. Was I? Straight up. Ooh. What's the matter? I just had a funny feeling that Jeannie walked across my grip. Up you go, Peter Pan. Right. Time I left for the court. Find you as soon as I have any news. Maud. Uh-uh. Jeff, they're here. They've been here all the time. You get Jeannie, I'll get to the court and try and delay them. Right. took the place upstairs. Clever. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do, Mrs. Roden. It's difficult to spirit a grown woman out of a busy block. The court resumes in ten minutes, Mr. Randall. It's too late now for you to do anything about it. We've got two minutes to get to court.
So you have not yet found your witness, uh, Jeffrey Randall, Mr. Parker. In that case, I have no... to proceed until the offending window has been located and firmly closed. How are we doing? If it is beyond your powers to trace the source of one small draft... I just serve this gentleman, myself and Mrs. Hopker. Is this your missing witness, Mr. Parker? Yes, it is, Your Worship. Your Worship, before the business of the court proceeds... Yes, Mr. Sorrell? My client wishes to change his plea. From not guilty... To guilty, Your Worship. <laughs> Somebody up there likes me. <laughs>